help Biafra. This is Biafra Liberation Army Network coming to you again. Please do subscribe, like, share, and comment. Can we get the several billionaires we have to invest more in the Southeast so that we can create decent jobs for our young people right here? Can we get beyond our individual beautiful mansions in our villages to make our land more lovable and livable? Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, beautiful people of Ndiwo, Biafrans, worldwide. I bless you and I greet you in the name of God. Today is Sunday and I say happy Sunday to you all. Yes, I want to bring a very mind-blowing information and that is a way to go. You know, very, very interesting here. When you see Ndiwo start thinking about themselves, you, you will know that things are about to get good. Yes, our professor, Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iwana, is bringing an idea why power should not fail in Southeast. Yes, hence, Zoological Republic have privatized power. So, why can't we seize the opportunity to better our region? Dr. Oti has started it all. Road, roads, and we have state roads. The federal government has privatized electricity generation and distribution, yet things have not really improved as much as we would like because of discontinuities in the system. But I see this privatization as an opportunity Southeasterners can seize to improve the situation in the region. One of our foremost citizens, Professor Barton Naji, has already shown what one man's ingenuity and drive can do. He may not have got it all right, but he has shown how we can try to solve some of our problems in the power sector. Now that the world is moving to renewables because of climate change, we also have the opportunity to move to off-grid solar solutions for our rural areas, while still looking to see how we use our gas for urban and industrial purposes. The Rockefeller Foundation in New York, together with some partners, is working on solar and battery storage solutions that can ta attack energy poverty in developing countries. They are looking at working in Nigeria. Can we attract them to the southeast? Let me dwell on a few other opportunities we can seize to develop economic activity in the region. Our biggest resource in the southeast is our human resources. Ndibo di entrepreneurial. Anye ma alo Anye ma izuafia. Some of the biggest entrepreneurs and industrialists in Nigeria are Igbos. Many micro, medium, and small enterprises that thrive in Nigeria, West Africa, and elsewhere are run by Ndibo. Have you ever been to the market in Niger, Burkina Faso, Cameroon? I have. And these places are full of enterprising Ndibo. Then I ask myself, why is the Southeast looking so shabby? Why is our wealth and industry, apart from Aba and Newi, not so visible here in the region? How can we harness this entrepreneurship even better at home? Beyond Innocent, our wonderful brother, and a few others, can we get the several billionaires we have to invest more in the Southeast so that we can create decent jobs for our young people right here? Can we get beyond our individual beautiful mansions in our villages to make our land more lovable and livable? How can we have an apprenticeship model that a, st a scholar recently described as, quote, the largest business incubator platform in the world, with apprentices emerging with skills, experience, and also startup capital, on close quote, and still see our young people desperate on the streets of our nature, Lagos, and every small and large city in between. I want to suggest right away that we convene a Southeast Investment Forum, not for people from outside the region or abroad, but for our own Igbo business people. In this forum, we should examine what is blocking greater investment in the Southeast region and what we can do to lift these blockages. Only after this, should we do a Southeast Investment Forum where we can attract outside foreign investors? Let me use this occasion to also let you know that yes, there are investors that can be attracted. 
This is a very important moment in the world where investors abroad are seeking to diversify their supply chains due to the vulnerabilities they've seen as a result of the pandemic and the war in Ukraine and the ravages of climate change. Certain supply chains are being considered. Pharmaceuticals, for example, fertilizer, labor-intensive industries, and yes, technology. The question for us in the Southeast is, can we attract any of this supply chain diversification? Technology is where the world is moving to. Artificial intelligence is what the world is talking about now, and it is exploding. We already have so many of our young Southeasterners involved, from fintech to electric motorcycles. From where I sit at the WTO, we can see that technology and digital are critical. The fastest growing segment of trade is digital trade, especially digitally driven services trade. When I talk about digitally driven services trade, this means anything from streaming music and movie services to delivering accounting and backup medical services. Digitally delivered services trade is growing at 8% per annum compared to 5.6% for goods trade. We have the human resources, the trained professionals to benefit from digitally delivered services trade. We also have the creative industries, film and music, centered in Onicha and elsewhere, that can become part of this trade. What we need is to build a digital backbone in the state, either through cable or satellite, to provide the appropriate digital infrastructure. This kind of investment is better done at scale. So I hope, Excellencies, that you can get together to figure out who to approach and how to how the supportive policies can be implemented to attract this kind of digital infrastructure investment. Digital trade for micro, medium, and small enterprises, online education, health and accounting services can provide good jobs and incomes for our young people. Enugu is already becoming something of a hub for tech and digital in the region. I wonder whether we can build on this to develop our own Enugu Com Valley. As I know, other Nigerian states are working on their version of Silicon Valley, California. Regarding pharmaceutical supply chains, the Federal Minister of Health, Dr. Mohamed Pate, is working on this to attract this supply chain to Nigeria. I suggest that as a region, you approach him to see if you can work together to attract vaccines, therapeutics, or diagnostics manufacturing facilities here to the southeast. Aba is already a manufacturing hub, along with Newi. What goes on in our area industrial market, despite the infrastructure and other challenges, never ceases to amaze me. They can label what they produce made in Italy, made in Korea, made in Japan, but the truth is, it's made in Aba. I know Governor Abia has his side set on trying to improve what is happening and improve the environment for those working in Aba. Again, can we all work together to build up and build out both Aba and Nunewi as industrial hubs? But let me say there is no reason why factories can not also be located in Oweri and Abakaliki. Let me touch on another important resource we have that we can make better use of. That is the large Igbo diaspora. I was surprised when I took an informal poll of a gathering of people in my village, Umo Disi here, to see how many families had at least one member in the diaspora. Surprised to find that almost everybody put up their hands. The Southeast has one of the largest diasporas in Nigeria, if not Africa. There are Igbos everywhere, from Douala to Durban, London to Leipzig, New York to Newfoundland. Igbos are highly educated professionals, university professors, doctors, lawyers, engineers, accountants and nurses, and also big sports stars in football and basketball in the USA in particular. All are willing to support the development of the region if they could find a stress-free way to contribute, and I, and I mean stress-free. Drawing on these diaspora resources, there is no reason why the Southeast could not become a service hub for education or health in the country and the region. 
Let our professors help develop high quality schools, build and universities, building on education investments already happening in the region to attract people beyond the Southeast. And let our diaspora doctors build up specialist hospitals that can draw people from other parts of Nigeria, West and Central Africa and beyond. I happen to know that many of these diaspora doctors would like to help. My husband is one of them. It may sound far-fetched, but I'm convinced we can make the Southeast a services hub for education and health services. We can also draw on the diaspora for financing. I don't know how many of you recall that when I was finance minister, Nigeria floated a diaspora bond of $300 million, a first for the country. Drawing on the resources of our diaspora, Though we also opened up the bond to other investors, we were able to attract hundreds of millions of dollars. Now, the World Bank has recorded almost $21 billion in remittance flows to Nigeria in 2022, about the largest remittance flows in Africa. A significant portion of this must come, must come from Southeasterners abroad. Most of this comes in to support consumption and some forms of investment at home. I'm sure the Southeast governors coming together can do some financial engineering and find a way to float a Southeast diaspora bond or fund to capture some of these flows and channel them towards financing some of these development priorities. I know that support from the Federal Government Ministry of Finance will be needed. It seems to me that we can pitch this to the incoming team they seem to be open to fresh ideas, so why don't we try to muster their support? You will notice that I've not dwelt on agriculture or natural resources. This is because that is where we always go first when we are talking about opportunities in the region, forgetting all the other possibilities that I've just spoken about. But I have not forgotten that we have big opportunities in agriculture, oil and gas, and some other minerals some of which may now be in demand as the world seeks to decarbonize and get to net zero carbon emissions in 2050. But again, to fully make use of this, value-added investments in these areas will need hassle-free bureaucracy and appropriate investment environments. Before I conclude, let me say that many of these opportunities that I mentioned will not prove as attractive if the macroeconomic environment in the country is unstable. Low growth, high inflation, depre the depreciating Naira, and exchange rate volatility make for daunting challenges. The federal government will have to get a handle on overall macroeconomic management for the country to attract both domestic and foreign investment and for the country to grow. This, they insist they are working on this. And I hope we, we can see stability soon. In the meantime, Southeast governors must work on the elements they can control, many of them listed above. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude by saying that I'm optimistic. Yes, I'm optimistic for the Southeast. Your coming together at this time is a great sign. Our youth and women are vibrant. They are ready to work. They are just waiting for a truly committed leadership. We have what it takes in the Southeast. Let us just get on and do it. Igbo Kwedu. You can attest with me that uh, Igbos are too close to development. Just that few rotten individuals are the ones blocking up the things. So now that the IQ, the initiative, the idea is coming, why can't we embrace it? Contribute money, dollars for ourselves. Build things in Ibu land. Get the roads working, get the light working, everything working.